I believe most of our audience has had a girlfriend or a boyfriend at one point or another in their lives. And since like 95% of our audience is dudes, let's say you just got a new girlfriend and for some reason, your best friend wants to take both of you out to dinner. Given he's your friend, you don't see any harm. However, you notice while you're at dinner that he is sending signals to your girlfriend and basically flirting with her. This is a metaphor for what sushi swap did to Uniswap. They flirted with Uniswap's liquidity providers, but more on that in the rest of the video. Hello and welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, where we explain complex crypto topics using simple stories so that you can understand them well enough to explain to your grandparents. Let's dig in. What was the infamous vampire attack? Before we get into talking about SushiSwap, it's important that you understand what an automated market maker is, because that's essentially what is getting attacked. And you can watch our video over that with the link in the description below. Essentially, these these are pools of money that allow traders to trade. The traders pay a very small fee that goes to the investors who actually supply the initial amount of money so that they could trade. So it creates a win-win situation. The investors earn rewards while the traders actually get to trade without having to find someone else to trade with. To put it simply, a vampire attack is when one DeFi protocol offers better rates to attract investors from another platform. Now, one of the most famous vampire attacks happened with SushiSwap. They were simply able to offer one of the best liquidity provider rates to any investor on their platform. Doing so meant a lot of people pulled their liquidity or their money from Uniswap and then put it in SushiSwap instead. A vampire attack attempts to gain three things from another popular protocol, and that is liquidity, which is their money, users, and when you put both of these together, it means trading volume, which is important because that means fees, which are rewards for the investors. So we come to how did SushiSwap do it? Well, let's get into a little story about SushiSwap. SushiSwap was created by an anonymous person who dubbed himself Chef Nomi. Chef Nomi simply created a vampire attack by offering the native token of Sushi as a reward for liquidity providers. He just offered better rates. In fact, at the beginning, these rates were up to 1000% APR. Within only a few hours of their launch, they reached over $150 million of value in tokens invested on their platform. Platform. Now you might be wondering, why in the world would you spend so much time and money creating a protocol for traders if you don't get anything out of it? Well, you're right, because Chef Nomi is anonymous. He doesn't even get the fame. But there was a part of the protocol that gave his developer wallet around 10% of all sushi tokens. And due to this, he accumulated a very large amount of sushi that was supposed to be used for developing the protocol further. Everyone was surprised when he took $14 million worth of sushi token and traded it for Ethereum. It looked like a rug pool and it basically was but at this point it was actually one of the largest trading protocols available at the time and so everyone was confused was it a rug pool what was he going to do with the money so that answers the question he created it anonymously and worked really hard to making it big so that he could have a 14 million dollar payday which when he cashed it out he actually crashed the price of sushi 73 percent after this in fact the protocol still worked so people could still trade their tokens and liquidity providers could still earn rewards but a lot of of trust was lost. And due to this, Chef Nomi gave his ownership of SushiSwap to Sam Bankman Fried. Now here's what Sam did. He actually increased the rewards to SushiSwap providers and then attempted to grow the protocol even more. Since he was anonymous, he tried to increase the trust. Now there's actually more to this story though. Chef Nomi came back and returned his $14 million to the dev fund. But that's a story for another video. If you'd like to see the full history of SushiSwap in our animated format, please leave a comment below as we're not not sure if this is something worth covering since it's technically more of a news event than a protocol definition. Moving on, are vampire attacks good? Now you might be thinking, SushiSwap taking all of Uniswap's customers is a bad thing. But just like someone else taking your girlfriend, there are pros and cons to it. The pro is that competition leads to better rates for both traders and liquidity miners. In the case of your girlfriend, if someone comes along and is like, hey, you should switch to the dark side to your girlfriend, hopefully that motivates you to be a better boyfriend and maybe even an overall better person, which is technically beneficial to both you and your girlfriend. So having competition in the decentralized finance space is very beneficial in many aspects. However, a bad characteristic of a vampire attack would be that tokens minted by the platform are unpredictable. We don't know if someone who farmed a bunch of tokens might decide to just dump them into the market, which would greatly crash the price. In other words, a vampire attack could be malicious, getting investors to take their money from a truly beneficial protocol and then deposit it into their risky fraudulent protocol simply by offering higher rewards. 
Now that you know what a vampire attack is and how it is performed, we want to ask, if you were in Chef Nomi's position, would you do the same? We'd love to hear your reply in the comments below. As we end this video, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something, and most importantly, we hope to see you in the next video.